Welcome to the House of Truth. Today, today we're going to look at what Paul wrote about the about the righteousness of the law. What did Paul mean by that? And more importantly, what's it mean for us today? So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to pick up where we left off on the journeys of Paul that recorded in Acts. In the here at Acts twenty three through five, and there are both. It, there are both three months. When the Jews laid wait for him, he went about to sail into Syria. He purposed to return through Macedonia. And there accompanied him in, into Asia, Sopater of Berea, and of the Thessalonians, Astartacus and Secundus, and Gaius of Derby and Timothy and Timotheus, and of Asia, Tychus and Trophimus. These going before tarried for us at Troas. Okay, the there that he's referring to is Corinth. He spent the winter with him on his third his, uh, his third journey, and this is when he wrote the letter to the Romans. Romans, the Romans chapter one makes it very plain that he had not been there to him yet, had not been there yet. But remember that remember the persecution that he created after the stoning of Stephen. People fled from Judea. Jews fled from Judea as far as Rome, bringing the gospel with them. So he's so. He's going to write to these believers yet because he plans on going there to Jerusalem, according to his itinerary he laid out, then Rome. So he's writing ahead there. We're going to look much what he said. We're going to look. We're going to look at that letter uh, quite a bit today. Now, the next thing here is the Jews. It doesn't mean every Jew. Paul was a Jew. Timotheus, Timothy was a Jew. His uh, apostle in training here. It means the radical, the, the rabid rabbis. I mean, even the average Jew on the street just didn't care one way or the other. But he has this group that's persecuting him, who I sometimes refer to as the rabid rabbis. They've had this, this this rabbinic system. They want they want this the same type same type of people that crucified Yeshua. They also persecute the apostles. So. That's who he's talking about. Well, he outs he outs he out foxes them. They're 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 look they're they're they they get wind he's going to go to sell into a Syria to Syria where Antioch is directly. So he just takes a different ship. He it's when they got wind and it takes a different ship and returns. Instead, goes through back to Macedonia, where where uh, Maria Thessalonica and Philippi are. Now these people who come with him to. Of course, Timothy is, is, is apostle in training, but the other ones are from these different congregations. And remember, he's um one of his missions is to collect is is to collect money for the poor persecuted saints in Jerusalem from all these congregations and bring it to them. And part of keeping order in doing that, that we looked at last week, is he sent he he asked he said that each congregation to pick up people to go take the take the take it with them, and he would go with them if he could as well. So. That's who these people are. They're bringing that. They're bringing that offering, that grace offering, from each of these congregations. And some of them you may notice, Derby, if you remember, is way over there. That's like, that's, is way over there. That was the first. Um, that's the. Uh, uh, that's the first. And that, they, these guys have been with him for quite a bit. They came from Derby. They went all the way across, all the way, all the way across into into Ephesus. And they've gone up to, to, to Corinth with him and back. So they've been with him for quite a while, about for several years by this point. So, or perhaps they came to they came when he was in Ephesus and met him there. Either way, they've been with him for a while. So, the, so and they're all going to meet together at Troas to deliver this. And that's all we're really going to look at today on uh, on his journey. Because we're going to focus on this. We're going to focus on on, on some on this thing he wrote this. Key issue he wrote to the Romans. They, they wrote, they discussed with him. Romans 2 25 through 29. For circumcision for verily prophets, if you keep the law. But if you be a breaker of the law, your circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if circumcision keeps, if the uncircumcision keeps the righteousness of the law, shall that circumcision, uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not circumcision be? Which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge you, who by letter and circumcision does, does transgress the law. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, circumcision that is of the heart 
in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Okay, well, first thing we need to notice here is, is circumcision does profit you. And we'll look, at, we'll look later at, at what Paul means by that. We shall see. But only if you keep the law. If you're not going to keep the law, your circumcision, you're, you might as well not be circumcised. In fact, you'd be better off if you're not going to keep the whole law, not be circumcised, which we'll look at later. But, but if someone's not circumcised, they keep what? Not the whole law, the righteous of the law. They're, then they're in circumcision, just count for circumcision. What's Paul mean by that? He means they're circumcised in the heart. The true circumcision is a circumcision of the heart, which the Father promised, which the Father pro, which the Father promised in Deuteronomy. This was not this is not Paul's original ideal. His revelation, the Pauline revelation, is only a revelation of what was already written before he came along. That the, the God Himself said He would circumcise their hearts. So, the true Jew is not the one who was circumcised in the flesh by their earthly father but the person who was circumcised in the heart by their heavenly father. So, so but, but notice, is the, is the righteous of the law that the uncircumcised have to keep. Now, let's look at, let's look at Romans. Paul's going to talk about this righteous of the law some more here in Romans 8, 3 through 8. For what the law could not do, and it is weak to the flesh, God sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh, for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Now the righteous of the law might fulfill in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is, it, is an enmity against God. It is not, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So they are, who are there in the flesh cannot please God. Okay, so what? So Paul, Paul in other places, we'll look at one later. But Paul says the law is good; it's holy; its commandments are holy and just and good. So the law is not the problem. Paul is saying our fle the flesh is the problem. The flesh, the weakness of the law is it's just a bunch of list of commandments, and people can't keep them because because our carnal flesh will not let us. It's not that we can't keep the commandments. It's the carnal mind that cannot keep the commandments. Because it's at war against God. It cannot be subject to his law. It is not and cannot be. So, so what's the solution? The solution is the spirit. And again, notice this phrase, the righteous of the law fulfilled in us. The righteous of the law. We're going to look at what that means exactly. And how are we going to fill that righteousness of the law? By not walking after the flesh, but after the spirit. People evil, evil who walk after the flesh mind, their, mind the things of the flesh. Their minds are on that. But we that walk after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So, but notice, because without the spirit, you cannot flee. There in the flesh cannot please God. You cannot please God. You cannot fulfill this righteousness of the law. Or, we're, so we're going to look at what that means by the righteous of the law. We're look some more some more of Paul's writings where he uses uh, talks about this righteousness of the law and, and what that means. Romans ten three through five. For they being ignorant on God's righteousness and going about establishing their own righteousness have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. For Moses describes the righteousness of the law, the man which does, does these things shall live by them. Okay, the they here is these, is, the they here is these rabbis, the Pharisees, the sins of the Pharisees are rabbis. All Pharisees came, from, all rabbis came from the Pharisees. They're proud of it too. They tried to make their own, so they, made their, they made laws about how to keep God's laws, commandments in the Torah, and then they made laws about how to make new laws for keeping God's laws. They put a hedge around the law, then they put, then they built the thing that make, uh, it, when circumstances changed to create new, new, new laws about keeping the law. But, but, in doing so, they didn't submit to the righteousness of God because God's point 
Well, we'll look at we'll look at what that means in a minute here. But Christ is the end of the wall. Now it, it means it doesn't mean the end like the end of a movie. He's the he's the end goal of the wall for righteousness, because we cannot have righteousness on our own. The law is to bring us to Messiah, so that we so that we can believe and be made righteous. And uh, the law, the only way to get righteous according to law that Moses describes is you got to do it all the time. You can never, ever violate one law, ever. If you do that, you'll live in it. But the problem is nobody can do that. Nobody's, nobody except Messiah, Yeshua, could do that. So let's, let, let's continue on. Go, look some more Paul's writings about this. Galatians 2, 16 through 18. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of our of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, we might be justified by the faith of Christ, not the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also found to be sinners. Is Christ therefore the minister of sin? God forbid. For I building in the things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. Okay, the reason why no he says knowing that what, knowing that man is not justified by the works of the law. Why? Because no one's kept the law. All have all have transgressed the law. That definition of sin that we looked at that, that both Paul agree, Paul implies in 1 John 3, 4 explicitly says, transgression of the law. All have transgressed the law. How do you get justified by the law? By never transgressing it. No one can be justified by the law. So man cannot be justified by those works because he didn't keep them. So what we need instead, we need faith in, in Jesus Christ. So that he is, so that we are justified. So we're not, so we're not to try to justify ourselves by keeping the law, but the, the, the keeping the commandments of the law. But Paul says, does that, does that mean Christ just wants us to go around running lawlessly, killing people and killing and raping and, plundering and you know so on and so forth god forbid we're to be justified by christ we we, we are to be justified by christ because we all have found because we are found to be sinners we are found that we have transgressed the law but as it mean christ did not deliver us from the penalty of sin so we could continue in sin So we're gonna look at something else Paul says about this righteousness about the, when it comes to the law. Galatians 3, 21 through 25. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For there been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scriptures conclude all understand that the promise of faith by Christ Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Before the law came, before the law came, we were all kept under the law. Shut up into the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Christ will not be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Okay. Now notice the next thing. So Paul's next thing is that Christ did not come to get, come for us to be lawless, to go around disobeying, breaking all the commandments of the law. And they also said that law is not against the promises that he gave so the problem is so the thing is though the law couldn't give us life if it could have righteous would have came by it it couldn't because we couldn't keep it because of our flesh that for, therefore we've all been included under transgressing the law so that we by faith can be can be delivered from the penalty now, before faith came, we were kept, Paul's, right, Paul's writing here about Jewish people, of course, were kept under the law. He means the law, and it shut up under the faith. The law kept them from going into, I, into idolatry. And kept, and it always, it was, no, even when Israel went into idolatry, there's always a remnant that was faithful to God. And, and how they do that? They had to do it by faith. They couldn't, they had faith. In a Messiah that was coming. 
Because without faith, it's, it's impossible to please God. And they could not keep those commandments by any other way. And the, and the law, the law was our tutor. They tutored them to bring them to Messiah. Why? So they could be justified by faith, because that was the only way to ever be justified. There is no shadow of turning in the Father. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's always been about faith. But now that they're under faith, they don't need that schoolmaster. Does that mean that we're just that they're just that they just ignore everything and just disobey the law completely? We shall see what Paul says about that. We shall get a very clear answer on that. But the, but the but the but the but the end goal of bringing the Messiah has been accomplished. So but now we're look now we're going to look at the words of Yeshua Jesus and see how what Paul. We're going to see how what Paul teaches is nothing different than Yeshua taught. Acts 5, 16 through, 16 through 20. Let your light so shine before men they may see your good works and glorify your God, which your Father, which is in heaven. Not, think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy or to fulfill. Verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not one jar tittle shall no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments as teach men so, he shall, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the rights of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. All right, this is, this, this is part of that famous Sermon on the Mount. And how does Yeshua, Jesus, how does Jesus tell us to let, he tells us to let us light shine before men, but how does he say to and, and have good works and then glorify God in heaven? But how does he say to do that? Through the law, through the commandments of the law. He didn't come to destroy it or the prophets. Heaven and earth are still here. I can see them out my I, I, I can see out my window. The earth has not passed away. Heaven's still in the look, look, the stars are still in the sky, the whole bit. So no, the law, not one little bit of it, a jot and tittle, by the way, are the little parts that make up the letters in Hebrew. The jot being small, the smaller one. So, not even one little change in the font has occurred in the law. Because, because, because heaven and earth are still here. And because of that, what's Yeshua said? He says, those who break one of the least commandments She'll teach men so. And, she, and the, okay, the, that brings a question. Why is he by the least of these commandments? We'll look and see. So if you want to, if you want to be least in this kingdom, teach people to break the least of the commandments and break them yourself. But notice you're not kicked out of the kingdom from breaking the least of these commandments. You're in there. You're just not, you're just least in the kingdom. But whoever what? Teaches these commandments, what commands? The commandments of the law. And, and do them, the least commandments, actually, of the law, and teach them. Should be called great in the kingdom of heaven. People think, like a Reinhard Bonnke, 33, billion, 33 million, I'm sorry, and 33 million people came to the minute, uh, filled out uh, cards, but that's how they got their count, commitment cards under his ministry. And people think, well, he's going to be great in the kingdom of heaven. Not necessarily. Yeshua didn't say, didn't say whoever 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 wins the most souls is great in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever has the biggest ministry, I mean, I'm a Reinhardt Bonnke fan, mind you, but that's not what Yeshua said. He says it's based on this: what you teach people about these commandments. Now we're looking, one last thing we're talking about is this thing about exceeding your, your righteousness. Sky exceed the rights of the scribes and the Pharisees, or you're not even getting in. We're going to look at what that means, exactly what this righteousness is. We've already talked about a little bit. They went about to establish their own righteousness, not the righteousness of, Ye not the righteousness of God, Yahuwah. So, you're not even getting in if you try to do it their way. You've got to come in by faith. Okay, now we're going to look at the next thing here. We're going to look at, now we're looking at how this ties in with what Paul says, how he, he agrees with all this teaching. Acts 
Romans 9, 30 through 30, 9, 30 through 33. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles which follow not the righteousness have obtained righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith, but Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, has not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it was by the works of the law. For they stumbled the stumbling stone. As is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone, a rock of offense. Whoever shall believe in him shall not be ashamed. Okay, there's quite, actually quite a bit in here. Okay, so first of all, we're talking about the, the Gentiles who didn't know anything about. When he says Gentiles in this context, you know, I, people were, were idol worshippers. They didn't know anything about God's laws, commandments. They weren't doing anything. They weren't doing anything to obey them. But when they came to faith, they turned from that, which we shall see. So they came to, they got that righteousness of the law. But Israel, which followed, did not. Why not? Because they didn't say, say they, didn't, they, they didn't do it by faith. They're by the works of the law. And one of those things Paul's referring to there, if you go back and read the Tanakh, the, the Old Testament, is you find that Israel was, was making all these sacrifices and all these things for sin, but they were living in sin. They, those were meant to be coverings because, because of the weakness of their flesh. They were looking at them more like, huh, I... I, I go I go fornicate this woman and all I gotta do it's all it's gonna cost me the goat <laughs> at the temple. They weren't they weren't they were they weren't doing it by faith. They didn't have faith in Messiah. They didn't have faith that 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 because the only way to keep the law is by faith. You cannot please God without faith. And Yah certainly wants you to keep he didn't want them to keep the commandments even and gave them to him. They were just trying to go through the motions, the rituals and stuff, and not obey the important stuff, which we'll look at. So, that stumbling stone, of course, is Messiah. Okay, we'll, we'll now, let's say Christ. Now, look, we're going to look at one more thing Paul says. We're going to look at another thing Paul says about this. This is about law and righteousness. Galatians 2.19 through 21. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Not I, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness comes by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Okay, the interesting thing here. Paul says he's dead to the law, but how? Through the law. Why does he mean by that? He means he's dead to this ideal of what he was doing before of trying to justify himself and get justification by keeping the law perfectly because the law brought him to Christ, to Messiah. So they really can live unto God. He really can do what God wants. Not through, not through the not through the letter of the law, but through the Spirit. So, in all of us, this should be true. We are crucified with Christ. And the only way we're going to live in this life, where we still have that unsaved flesh, is by faith in Messiah. So, he gave himself for us. And, and notice that Paul says, if, if righteousness comes to the law, if we could be, if we, if any of us could have kept the law perfectly every day on our own, then Yeshua, Messiah, Christ, died for nothing. The old argues and say, well, the Jews killed Messiah, killed Jesus. No, it was really the Romans. I mean, were, but the truth is, I can't. I cannot watch a play without losing it and just bawling like a baby every time I hear the hammers starting hitting the nails. Because my hands are the hands that drove the nails into his hands. My sin made his death necessary. And the same is true for the rest of us, the rest of you. 
He didn't have to die. He wouldn't have to die if just one of us could have kept the law, every command of the law, every day without fail. Adam couldn't even do it when God only gave him one. So, and we were all in Adam's loins. We would have all done the same thing. So, so we cannot be made righteous by the law by keeping these commandments because we'd have to keep them perfectly and none of us can do it in our flesh. The spirit it only allows us to keep these commandments and by faith. So let's look at, Paul's going to expand upon this idea some more, Galatians 3, 16 through 19. Now to Abraham and his seed where the promise is made. He says not, and to seeds as of many, but as one of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. In this I say that the covenant which was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot this knowledge make the promise not effect. For if inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore serves the law? It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hands of a mediator, in the hand of a mediator. So, so the law we saw is not against the promise, but it did not it did not also nullify the promise. Remember, our faith is on promise. Abraham was the father of faith, the father of circumcision. Circumcision he got the the circumcision was a sign of the faith he had while he's yet still uncircumcised. But then, so we do not get we do not inherit by keeping the law we because again we have to keep it perfectly and we don't i also want you to notice that christ that god that god confirmed the law in christ moses moses had given the law so he talked to god face to face but later god said but later god said no one can see my face and let me see his backside he was talking to messiah there's many instances of a, 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 a Messiah, Christ, in the in the in, in the in the Old Testament, in the Tanakh, the Torah, making appearances. Messiah, Jesus, gave the law. It didn't make any sense. He'd be any way against it. So, what was its purpose? If it wasn't for inheritance, it was because of transgressions. So we could know what sin was. So we see our condition. So we know to come to Messiah. And also, it, it this pro, Abraham, God gave it to Abraham by promise, but for his individual children, for it to take effect, they had to meet certain conditions, which I'll look at some other, we'll look at in their, in their lesson sometime. And the law told him how to meet those conditions. It's like, okay, I gave you a real big summary. Now here's the details. But it was never, the inheritance never came by law. The law is that for transgressions. All right, we look at the next thing about this, this thing about the law that Paul says. Galatians 5, 1 through 7. Stand fast, therefore, in a liberty where, in, where, where Christ has made us free. And be not tangled again in the, bond, in the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For, ver for I testify again to every man that is circumcised, he is a dare to the whole law. Christ become of no effect to you, whosoever you are justified by, by the law. You are fallen from grace. For though we through the law, the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision avails anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which works by love. You did run well. Who did hinder you? You should not obey the truth. Okay, first thing I want you to notice is we're going to stand in the liberty, Christ made us free, not be entangled again, the yoke of bondage. We'll look in a little bit more detail about what he means by this yoke of bondage. But in the context of his Galatians letter, he's actually not referring to the law itself, but those, te that, that, those teachings of the rabbis where they went out to establish their own righteousness. Yeshua said it was a bond. They said they put a burden on men, a burden on men, but they would not even lift with their own little, that was too heavy to carry, but they would not even lift with their own, even raise their finger to lift themselves. 
That's actually the, the yoke of bondage if you look, if you read all of Galatians in context. However, and there were people, there were Judaizers there, people trying to bring them under, trying to somehow marry Christianity and, 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 and the teaching of the rabbis together, just, just like there is today. Uh, many of Messianics fall into that same trap. But notice, if you are going, if you are going to try to earn your own salvation by by doing by being justified, you are falling from grace. You no longer are trying to. You are no longer being justified by faith. Again, is he saying go around and be lawless in that case? No, but don't rely on it to save you. Now we'll look at. We're going to examine this thing here. Paul says, if you be circumcised, Christ shall probably nothing. Now, if you think out of context, Paul was therefore the Messiah didn't stop, didn't, didn't um, profit Paul anything because Paul Paul brags about the fact. At one point, he was compelled to brag to the to the Corinthians that he was circumcised on the eighth day, and Paul also circumcised Timothy in uh, Acts sixteen. I think it's I think it's verse four. Um, he uh, he circumcised Timothy. So Paul doesn't is is not a free is not a thing in circumcision. It's about circum, being circumcised to be saved, which he's deadly, which he's deadly against. He circumcised again Timothy himself, and what he did look, he made Timothy out there do the whole law. And we'll go look at what that means again. We'll go look at that what that means. He's he's not just going to do the, he's not just going to do the great commandments, but the least commandments as well. But He's not preaching against people doing those commandments. He is preaching against you putting your, your faith in those. Your, because we need Messiah. And notice, in Christ, circum, being circumcised, he's not, if you're circumcised and you don't have faith in Messiah, circumcision doesn't make you more saved. Uncircumcision doesn't make you less saved. It's faith that works by love. And, and Paul wrote in another place that if you love your neighbor, you're not going to break the commandments of the law. You're not going to commit adultery on them. You're not going to steal from them, so on and so forth. So faith works by love. The point of the, the remember, all the commandments are wrapped up in two. Love, your love God, love people. But you can't keep those commandments without faith. Faith works by love. And this thing about People are hindered from obeying the truth. I know people who actually have denied the very, the very denied Jesus at bottom because they get wrapped up in this trying to be justified by the law. We are not to obey. We are to obey the truth. The Spirit will lead us into obedience of the commandments of the law, at least the ones that apply to us, which we're going to look at what that means in detail pretty soon. First Timothy, this is more about the right way to use the law. Remember, the Pharisees were teaching the wrong way, which Yeshua said, you don't do it their way. It's not going to help. It's, uh, yeah, not, 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 you got to be, you got to do better than they do it. And the rest of the Sermon on the Mount explained how that was. They say, fast this way, I tell you to do this when you fast. They said, do this, I tell you to do that. So, we're going to look, we're going to look at what, what Timothy also says about, finish up what Paul says about the, about the law. Now, the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned, from which, having swerved, have turned aside to vain juggling, desiring to be teachers of the law, they're saying neither what they say nor where they affirm. For we know the law is good if a man uses it lawfully. Knowing this, the law is not made for the righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners. For unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, that the defile themselves of mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons. It would be anything, anything other thing that's contrary to sound doctrine. Okay, what commandment? The commandment of the law in the context when he wrote Timothy. That commandment is the point of that commandment, the end goal of that commandment is charity. Is love out of a pure heart and to give us a good conscience and a sincere faith. 
Faith is confidence that leads to action. Since biblical faith is comes what God said that leads to action. If we if we if, if we just say if we just make up our own rules, it's not sincere faith. We are going out of our own imaginations. That but we but the law will give us well, the commandments. The goal of the commandments is to lead us into un into sincere sincere faith. We don't listen to people who are contrary to God's word or make up or, or go after our own imaginations. Notice which some have squared from a side in the Jane Vega, but serves them what? The commandment, the goal of the commandment, more to the point. And why they, and why they do they desire to be teachers of the law. And that, notice this, they don't understand what they're saying and what they confirm. And many of us have come across people like that. They, they want to give themselves the title rabbi, which Yeshua said not to do very plainly in Matthew chapter 10. And they do not know, they are not teaching what the Torah, the law says at all. They are teaching what the rabbis teach. And they don't even know what they're talking about. They're not even, they're not even rabbinically trained often. They're just repeating what someone else says. But they're definitely, you know, they were rabbinically trained. They're not trained in what the Torah says. They're trained in what people said the Torah says. There's a big difference. But what about the Torah itself? Here again, Paul says, it is good. But we have to use it the right way, which is what Yeshua had said. If we use it lawfully, meaning according to its intended purpose. And what's, its, and what's one of his main purposes? To make sin apparent to everyone. No, it's not made for the righteous man. If you're out there walking in love, you don't really need a law to tell you don't, don't sleep with your neighbor's wife, don't have sex with your neighbor's wife, or don't steal their stuff or kill their children or whatever the case is. It is made for the disobedient. And it's, same, it's made for people that are murderers and manslayers and whoremongers, which is the Greek word, is literally just fornicators. The people involved in prostitution, whether, whether buying, selling, or providing. And again, this thing about homosexuality, provide to file themselves with mankind. No. And, note, and, and lastly, he concludes this being contrary to sound doctrine. What's sound doctrine? What was written in the law? But again, the, we've already seen that there's lesser matters of the law, least commandments, and that means implies bigger commandments. So we're gonna look, we're gonna start looking at what the difference between those are. And which ones apply to who? Because that is the righteousness of the law, is the ones that apply to everyone. Matthew 23, 23 through 26. The words of Yeshua, Jesus. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you pay of tithes and anise and cumin, and omit it, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These you ought to have done, and not to leave the other undone. You blind guides, who strain in a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you make the clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but with the end they are full of extortion and excess. You, you blind Pharisee, clean first that which is in, within the cup and the platter, that they also may, that the outside of them may also be clean. Okay, so notice this is first of all, this is not a sermon against tithing. He says they ought not to leave the other undone. We are to pay our tithes, and they took it to the extreme. When they went to their well, their little spice garden, they had a little mint in their anise and their cumin growing, and decided to cook with some. They 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 chopped it up and took one tenth and laid it aside to uh, pay his tithes, either in the either in the synagogue or in the temple, depending on their location. And he's not rebuking them today. So they, they, they were verbally fine in doing that. To some people, it may seem extreme, but he, you know, she was not, she is not saying that's a problem. But the problem is they're doing that instead of taking care of the weightier matters of the law, which are justice, mercy, and faith. And notice, faith is a matter of the law. Again, you cannot keep the commandments of the law without faith. And so, that means there's weightier matters too. And we cannot just do the, so that, and that's why, and this was this metaphor about swallowing a gnat and straining a gnat and swallowing a camel. They're all worked up over these little bitty things and ignoring the huge things that matter. 
it's kind of like this guy I talked to once in a, in a mess in a mess in a congregation. He was, you know, he was all about how he gave up pork and quit eating bacon and blah blah blah. But you know, got to listen to him, know him a little bit better. Turns out, well, he had kids that estranged. He had done wrong to them and their mother both. And instead of going to them and trying to restore that relationship, like Yeshua said, he just thought, "I'll quit eating bacon instead." No. If you're only going to be one of those, keep eating the bacon and take and, and, and get right with your, get right with other people. These small, these lesser things are not a substitute for the greater things. I mean, Yeshua is saying, if you're only going to pick one, pick, pick, look, pick justice, pick these weightier matters. And notice he's calling tithing a lesser matter. And how many times have we got, uh, if I've been to a congregation, where they ignore things like like the Corinthians were, where the where a guy was having a guy was actually having sexual relationship with his mother with his stepmother, because they want to upset someone because they were a big tither. Yeshua says the tithing is not is a lesser matter, but because of that they straight they, they ignore that. As long as people keep paying their tithes, they'll let anything go on. Again, no, 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 that's pharisaical thinking. That's not, that kind of righteousness will not get you in the kingdom of heaven. We have to exceed that. So at, we're, now we're going to look at, we're going to look at a case of Paul. What Paul did teach about the law and what he didn't teach. Acts 21, 20 through 24. And this is Paul when he first, this is Paul when he's, when he's coming back from his third mission and has told it, and this is James speaking. This is, We'll see what they, we'll see, we'll see what James says here. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, See you, brother, how many thousand Jews which are believed, and they are all zealous of the law, and they are informed of you that you teach us all the Jews which are among the Gentiles forsake Moses, saying they ought not to circumcise their children, near walk after the customs. Why is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that you are come. Therefore, do therefore this that we say to you. We have four men which have a vow on them. Take them, take, and purify yourself with them, and be a charge of them. They may shave they may shave their heads, and all know those things which they have formed concerning you how are nothing, but that you have that, that you yourself also walk orderly and keep the law. All right, there's a lot in here, so let's start at the top. Paul, Paul rehearsed some all these great things Yah's done for, for both Jews and Gentiles, by the way. And notice the, 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 the disciples who are the, the apostles, this is James talking, they do not see a problem with being believing and being zealous of the law, of keeping the commandments. They don't see a conflict here. Because there never was a conflict. Yeshua didn't see one either. We looked at Jesus' own words on this. So, but there's an accusation against Paul. And the accusation is what? They're teaching who? The Jews. Oh, notice the Jews, that lit, which are among the Gentiles. Not the Jews in Judea, but the Jews who are out there scattered among the Gentiles over in Corinth and, 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 Corinth and Thessalonica and, and uh, Galatia and all the places he's been. To what? Forsake Moses. Forsake the, the law. Which part of the law? Circumcising the children and walking after the customs. And we're going to look at what those customs are in a little bit. So, Paul's and, and their advice is to show that, there, that there's absolutely no truth to this accusation. We want you to do something. And when he says, be a charge of them and shave their heads, he's talking about a Nazarite vow. And when you finished it, you had to give a sacrifice. What it means by being charges is, I want to say you have to give an ox, but I can't, a, a bull, a, maybe a bullock. I can't remember, but you got to give this animal. It's expensive, so it was allowed because people don't always have money to buy one for themselves for people to go in on one and, and, and sacrifice it. And you ended your Nazarite vow. You, when you began it, you shaved your head and your beard, everything but your eyebrows. And when you ended it, you shaved all of it again. Actually, the, Levit the Levitical barber shaved it for you more accurately. And they took and you took the hair of your vow, 
and threw it in the fire under the sacrifice. Then you ate of the sacrifice, ate some of the sacrifice. Paul's going to pay money, considerable money. Um, a good steer, or, or uh, it could be a steer, but a good bullock costs you maybe two thousand dollars a day. And family people, Paul went in. Paul went in fit when when enforcers people. He paid five hundred dollars. That's what they're telling him to do. And why? So people can see he walks early. And what that Paul keeps the law. That Paul is keeping the whole law, like he like he said. Those are circumcised. They're deader to do. Well, let's look at Paul's response to this. Acts 21, 25 through 26. As touching the Gentiles, which believe we have written and clearly they observe no such thing. Similarly, they keep themselves from things offered idle and from blood and from strangling from fornication. And then Paul, then Paul took the men, the next day, pure of with them, entered into the temple to signify the conference of the days of purification until that an offering should be offered for every one of them. Paul consented to this because he himself was keeping the law. But notice the Gentiles are different. Why Gentiles? We're not talking about idol worship. We're talking about Gentiles that believe, which believe. They are not to observe, observe any such thing. What thing? Being circumcised and keeping those customs. They do not need to do those things to be saved. In fact, those things never saved anyone. But we'll look at why the distinction. The, the, Paul's teaching the Jews. They're, he's been out, been out there everywhere he's been going to walk in the, to keep those customs, to be, keep the, the children to be circumcised and to keep those customs. And the Gentiles, no, just these things here. They're not the things offered to idols because the Bible, the, the, Paul, Paul himself writes, he's quoting, the, he's quoting the Torah. Those who do that are eating things offered to demons. They don't have that fellowship with demons. From blood, which has several applications. One's eating blood. Another, of course, is things like murder and stuff. But the other one is being, having men having sexual relations with their wives during her during her monthly her monthly cycle, and she's bleeding because her because her uterus lining is being destroyed. They're not to do the Gentiles are not to do those things. Things strangled animals that, that, that they strangle. They have all this poop and everything left in them. The Romans like doing this. No, not good. You got you to get rid of certain parts. Certain parts of a, an animal are just not fit to eat for anyone. And fornication, any kind of sex outside of marriage, including, but not limited to, homosexuality. So, those are the things, and it's not a complete list which we shall see, but those are the type of things the Gentiles are to do. But they're not to keep these customs and be circumcised. So Paul's teaching two groups, different different aspects. He's teaching he's teaching all of them to keep the weightier matters that Yeshua talked about, and Jews to keep the lesser matters. So Paul is in line teaching with Yeshua's teaching. He's not trying to make Gentiles into Jews. He came to bring sinners. He's trying to make sinners into believers. That's why he was sent to do not to make Jews Gentiles into Jews. So we're gonna look, we're gonna look at what we're, we're gonna, now we're gonna get down to the nitty gritty about what is this righteousness of the law. More accurately, what is he, what disqualifies you from having the righteousness of the law? Because the righteousness of the law is not doing the things we're gonna look at. First Romans 1, 28 through 32. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malig malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, the spiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedience of parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural infection, implacable, unmerciful, who know, who knowing the judgment of God, which that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Okay, so there's a few things. First of all, who didn't want to retain the knowledge of the God? These people, the Gentiles who went to idol worship. Now, Israel sometimes went to idol worship too, but never, there was always a remnant who stayed faithful to Yah. But the Gentiles wholesale went to idol worship. Because why do they do it? 
because they didn't want to keep God in their knowledge. So God just let them do whatever, they, whatever evil thing came to their minds. But notice the Gentiles without excuse, these idol worshipers, they know, they know inside there's judgment for these things. And every people, I talk to people of all kinds of religions and cultures, and there's certain things that are wrong in every group. I've, murder is wrong, at least inside your own group. Maybe okay to kill people from another group, but not your own. Stealing is wrong from your own group. So on and so forth. They have a conscience. They understand some of these things are wrong. Some without understanding some things they don't even get that they're doing wrong. They don't know their left hand from their right. But notice, again, homosexuality without natural infection is among the list. And I also want you to notice some of these things are not actions like fornication. Some are conditions of the heart. Because rejection, the, 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 the flesh is not subject to God's law, neither can it be. It's about the heart. And notice he says such things are worthy of death. Well, a lot of these things, you look them up in the Torah, in the law, the penalty for them was death. So there's no disagreement here about Paul's writing and the law rights. Now, we're looking at another aspect of this righteousness of the law. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Know you not that the unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. They are fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusing themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. But such some of you want such word, some of you, but you are washed. You are but you are sanctified, you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of, of our God. Okay, again, what kind of things are we talking about that? will keep you out of the kingdom. Fornication, idolatry, adultery, effeminate. Uh, that Greek word's malakos, it means a cross-dresser, a man that dresses like a woman, a woman that dresses like a man. God is not amused by, people think that's funny, but God is not amused. It's the kind of thing that'll keep you out of the kingdom. Again, it's abusing themselves with mankind. There's homosexuality again. God did not make them that way. They were not born that way. And, and, they, and they will not inherit God's kingdom. They continue in this. Think, stealing, coveting, revilers. Revilers here are people that revile the government. And you, don't, and you go to Facebook in America, you have no shortage of revilers. Revilers, people are just... Re, just despise the government because they despise it, because they don't like having laws, don't like, think the government's always up to no good and whatever, will not inherit the kingdom of God. We're to respect our rulers and obey the laws unless they contradict God's laws. But notice this, we're not supposed to live that way. Such some of you once were. Now that we've been washed by the blood of Yeshua, now that we've been set us apart, now that we've been justified, we're not to live that way anymore. The rights of the law is not doing these things. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifested through these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like which as I tell you before, as I've told you in the time past, they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, remember the law, the flesh cannot keep God's Torah, cannot keep his commandments. It's not subject to it and it cannot be. Well, why? Because these, the, these are the works of the flesh. And the works of the flesh are again these, I'm going to explain a couple of them here. It may not be witchcraft. It doesn't just mean like people sitting around a cauldron. <laughs> and the Greek word is actually pharmakia, and not referring to going to the pharmacy and getting medicine for sickness, but actually hallucinogenic drugs like marijuana, THC and marijuana. And it was and the reason they call it, they, they, they translate as witchcraft in the King James, because people involved with the demonic would take these hallucinogenics to get in touch with the demonic world, or to talk to the dead which again are contrary 
to the law. Torah forbids that. So, and it doesn't matter if your if your state made marijuana illegal. Go, you go around smoking pot, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. And one more, uh, revelings is what the world calls partying, okay? You go around doing that, and you go around teaching heresies, you're not inherit the kingdom of God. You go around, and the heresy is just things that's contrary to God's word. You try to put, you're trying to say God says something he didn't say, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. You go around partying in the world, what the world means by partying, basically getting together, maybe eating some food, getting drunk or high on these drugs and, and committing fornication. You're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. This is, so the rights of the law is, is not doing those things. Now, we're, in the Yeshua, we're going to look at his own words and he can expound upon this a little bit more himself in Matthew 13, 37 through 43. He answered and said unto them, He that sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, the good seed of the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The thing that sold them is the devil, the harvest, the end of the world, the reapers are the angels. As therefore, as therefore the tares are gathered and burned with fire, so shall be so it shall be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be welling and neat gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous shall shine forth as a son in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Okay. Yeshua here is explaining the parable of the sower. And and, and, and the notice this, this the, the end of the world. The notice what he's going to do at the end. At the end, he's going to send forth his angels. And what are they going to do? They're going to gather out of his kingdom. Now this is in the millennial kingdom. He already has his kingdom up. All the things of the fin and those which do iniquity, those who do not keep the righteousness, who do not keep the righteousness of the law. What's going to happen to them? They're going to go in the furnace. There's going to be welling and gnashing of teeth. Who's left? The people who would keep the rights of the law. They're going to shine as the sun in the kingdom of, in the kingdom of God. So you're going to you, so you've got to keep that rights of the law, which again you can only do through faith. It's not to be justified. It's not to. It's not. It's not for you to be saved. It is you be obeying because you are saved. Yeshua, Jesus said, "If you love me, you obey me." So you're going to strive to obey him in these things. And again, what things? These weightier matters. We'll look in a moment at what these customs are that don't apply to everybody and who they do apply to and why. Ephesians 5, 5 through 7. For this you know, that no whoremonger or unclean person or covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance of the kingdom of God, of Christ, and of God. Let no man deceive with vain words. For because, these things, because of these things come the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience, do not be partakers with them. So, so we've talked about some of these, but notice if you're coveting, which is just simply one of other people's stuff, you're an idolater. You are looking for that stuff to fill some need that Yah should be, that God should be filling in your life. And you're not going to have any inheritance in the kingdom of God. We're not to be coveting. The goal of life is not to get more, to get bigger, better, newer, everything. We are to seek God's kingdom, and he'll add to us the things we need to, fill, to carry out his will. And, and notice, if anyone tells you otherwise, these, they are empty words. If they tell you you can do these things and still enter the kingdom of God, they're empty words. The wrath of God will come upon you. And we've looked at what that wrath is that Yeshua talks about being thrown in the furnace. And the solution is don't be partaker, therefore partakers of them. Fulfill the rights of the law, fulfill its righteous demands and apply to everyone that we've been looking at. And one more time, we're looking at Yeshua's words in Revelation 21, 7 and 8. He that overcomes shall inherit all things. I will be his God and he shall be my son. 
But the fearful and, unbe the un and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. This is the second death. Well, again, a clear separation. Those who overcome, overcome what? The flesh, the world, uh, sin. They will be, God will be, the Father will be our God, and we will be his son. We are already the sons of God in the sense, but it's finalized at this point. Not, we, we may know it, God may know it, but the world, everyone will know it. We're going to live with him as father and son. Right now, he's our father, but his presence is with us, but we're not where he's at at the moment. But we are going to live with him in the new Jerusalem. However, everyone else who don't fulfill the righteousness of the law are not going to live with him. And I want you to notice who's first, not the unbelievers. In what I like to call a who's who of, a who's who of hell. The fearful are. Literally, the Greek word is fear ruled. Because so much evil happens because people are just afraid to stand up against it. The Nazis at their peak were 7% of the German population. Yet look what they got. The, they got most of the, of the 93% to do all kinds of evil because they were simply afraid to stand up against them. Some did. In, inside the area controlled by the Nazis, Six million Jews died in the Holocaust, but most people know is six million Christians also died, and six million Jews escaped the Holocaust. Largely by those Christians who died in the Holocaust for helping the Jews escape. Real courage comes from knowing that to live is Christ, to die is gain. That we are better off dead. That it's far better for us to be with Messiah than to be on this earth. But, the, but those who are afraid, who do not have faith, will let all kinds of evil prevail. Simply because they're afraid to stand up against the evil. And they may very well die for standing up against it, like those six million Christians that were Holocaust for helping Jews. Escape. So, that's who's first. We must be more afraid to disobey God than we are to disobey people. Okay, now we're going to get that. We're going to look now at these lesser matters, what those are, these customs. We're going to look at a few of them to give you kind of a general idea. And what, and what their purpose is, why there's even these, these bonus commandments, if you will, okay? There's commandments apply to everyone, which we've, discussed at length, but there's also ones that don't apply to it. We're going to look at why and, what they, and, and give you an idea what some of them are. Exodus 13, 19, 3 through 6. And, God, and Moses went up to, unto God, and the Lord called him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, how I bury you on the eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And these are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So, Paul, so God himself, first of all, when he knows a peculiar, above all the people, for the earth is mine, that there's going to be other people on the earth, like you're going to see in Revelation chapter 22, the nations in their state will bring their, will, will, will bring their tribute, their tithes, really, into, in, into the New Jerusalem. So, but these people are, but there's just going to be a special class of people that procure your treasure. Well, they need to be marked somehow. They, they're going to have to, they're going to, they're, they're because of the position of being a priest, a nation, a, pri a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation, they're not going to be. Able, they're not going to live the same way as everyone else. They're going to be. They're going to be a greater level of separation from them and other people. And one of those things which we looked at very extensively was circumcision, in a former in a previous teaching about um, the circumcision controversy, where we saw that circumcision. The rule is: if you're circumcised, you must eat Passover. Keep it. If you're not, you must not. 
So even inside the nation of Israel during the millennium, there's going to be there's going to be people who aren't circumcised, not people who are the sins of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but other people. And they and they can get circumcised if they want, but if they do, then they're dared to keep the whole law. We're going to look at what this we're looking now and look at some of those things and make up the whole law. The Paul's talking about so those lesser commandments Yeshua talked about. Exodus 13, 31, 13 through, 30, through 17. Speak you also to the children of Israel, saying, Ver, Verily my Sabbath you shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord that does sanctify you. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defiles it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever does any work therein, that so shall be cut off from among his people. Six days' work may be done, but the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord, whosoever does any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Therefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath and observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days, the Lord made the heaven and the earth. On the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. Okay, we looked at all these things that they will keep down the kingdom, won't inherit the kingdom. And what was not on the list was we, there's there's a few things that are actually listed as death penalty crimes in, in death penalty crimes in the Torah. One of them was about because they're in Passover, eating it if you're not circumcised, not eating if you are. But another one is violating the Sabbath. It's not a death penalty crime for everyone. It is a very serious matter for people who are, who are circumcised. It's part it's part of what they agreed to do. The co- the, the the covenant Moses mediate it was not the com- law and the commandments it was a covenant to agree to keep the law and the commandments and they could not do it in their flesh so the god had to give us but when god gave us our when god gave us the spirit the spirit made us able to keep this keep keep those commandments as it says the first place it's mentioned in Levit- ezekiel chapter 11 and also he's the same things repeated in ezekiel 8 chapters 18 and 36 so this covenant they could not keep in their flesh so the spirit was given but the laws are the same and not all laws again apply to everyone the righteousness of the law those things we looked at is many things but it does not include the sabbath you do not have to keep the sabbath and even today if you tell people you observe the sabbath most people think right away you're jewish even though there's other people like like um Oh gosh, I just faced their names. There's a, there's, they, they, they're vegetarians too. Anyways, who don't? Who keep, uh, there's other groups that keep the Sabbath. They're believers. There's groups outside that are. Uh, 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 but people automatically think Jewish. And that's just what first thing comes to their mind because it's a sign. Well, if you're not part of the, if you're not part of that physical camp of it, of Abraham. You haven't been circumcised for the, for that reason, I might add. Not you're just routinely because your parents. Then you do not have to keep the Sabbath. However, it's very beneficial for you to keep it. Doesn't mean you can't keep it. Just you don't have to. It's one of those customs that doesn't apply to you. We're gonna get one more that doesn't apply to people, even though it's very beneficial to do it. Leviticus eleven forty three through forty seven. And you shall not make yourselves a bond with any creeping thing that creeps, or with and make yourself neither shall you make yourselves unclean with them, they should be defiled thereby. For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and you shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourself with any manner of creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. For I am the Lord that brought you up that brings you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. This is the law of beasts and the fowls. Of every living creature that moves in the water, and every living, every creature that creeps upon the earth, to make a difference between the clean and the unclean, the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. Okay, this again is is what it's. There's no penalty, by the way, for eating these things. There's a promise for not eating them. Paul said that Paul Paul wrote that uh, the first commandment with promise was about obeying your your parents but it's the only one of the ten commandments of the promise 
the promise the promise concerning if you do walk in all his statutes which includes these things is he will not lay sickness upon you and use collective there if everyone in the community does what, everything he says no sickness in the community you're not sick you don't know anybody that's sick so there's a benefit here to doing this but one of those benefits is not salvation you don't get in his kingdom by what you eat and don't eat kingdom the kingdom of god is not in food and drink but in holiness enjoying the holy ghost i'm sorry by righteousness no i'm sorry by feeling enjoying the holy ghost anyways it's not by food and drink so you're not doing this to be righteous you're doing it to what to be holy and he's saying and this is what peter actually quotes he says be you holy for i am holy this is where peter's quoting from he's saying be so separate so holy so different from everyone else even down to what you eat not instead of those other things not bacon quit eating bacon but you know let, let, leave your leave, leave your angry son angry that you did wrong to and not try to reconcile with him no he's saying do all those you, you have these extra obligations if you're going to be part of that part of that part of that peculiar treasure to him that Nate, that kingdom, all the other kingdoms are going to bring their tribute into and stuff. That's above all the other nations. And one, and one of those is about what you eat. So, do, so you can eat anything you want and be in God's kingdom. But if you decide to make the, and you don't even have to be circumcised to start keeping these other. You can keep most of the feast without being circumcised. Only one day, one night a year, Passover, one meal, you can't eat that. But everything else you can do, you can observe you can, you can observe as holidays, you can meet on the Sabbath, you can you can not you can not eat things he says are literally filth. Abominable the Greek the Hebrew word there's literally filth. That's why they defile people. They don't defile your spirit. What goes into man doesn't, doesn't make him defiled. They defile his, their bodies. He said, remember, Yeshua said, clean the inside and then the outside. Just some of the outside, their bodies. So you can do those things without being circumcised. But if you get circumcised for that reason to be identified as part of this group, you got to do all of it. But the rights of the law applies to everyone. No stealing, no killing, no cheating on no 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 extorting people no lying about about your neighbor no doing anything that's contrary to loving god and loving people that's all i got for this week thank you very much for listening till next week shalom